Welcome back. So, first of all, let me apologize in case the noise of the air conditioning is a little grating in the background. We've hit that time of year when we are either going to have to deal with the traffic noises, which I know are horrific, or we're going to have to deal with closed windows and air conditioning noises. So, I appreciate your patience. My bad boy is not with us at the beginning of this video, as he usually is, because he is out, he is out just making mischief in the neighborhood. So, uh, he may turn up, he may not. We're going to go ahead without him and see where this takes us. So, I thought we would start off by doing a little follow-up on two of the videos I did last week, and then we're going to move into our main topic. So, we'll get into this when we come back. So, let's start off with the fun stuff. Last Sunday evening, I mentioned that there was this poor fellow who happens to bear a very strong resemblance to Captain Kangaroo. For those of you in the UK, Captain Kangaroo was a much beloved children's show host, uh, and I, he did this for, for years, just just generations of children grew up with this delightful man. He was never involved in anything untoward. You know, he was just as much loved at the end of his life as he was at the beginning of his career, which for children's stars, I'm guessing, is pretty rare these days. Well, that was frankly nothing more than a social media joke that just went wild. So, let's take a quick look at what I had to say about it last week. Okay, strange coronation stories. This one has got to be my favorite. Rumors circulating far and wide that Nutmeg snuck into the coronation. And this has even been picked up by the legitimate news media. It started off as some sort of, like, Twitter rumor, I'm guessing. And it was that Nutmeg had snuck in in disguise. She was disguised, allegedly, as this man. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but my first thought when I saw this picture is, oh, so that's what Captain Kangaroo's been up to lately. Well, no, of course it's not Nutmeg. Apparently, it was nothing more than a joke to begin with, because I saw some of the uh, comments uh, from the social media posts that were published when the newspapers picked it up. It's very clear it was all in fun, that it was a jest. But apparently they just up and ran with it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, and you can't even say it was a slow news day because this was the day of the coronation. If you had nothing else to talk about, you could talk about the coronation. So that was probably the most bizarre. Nutmeg showed up, snuck into the coronation, dressed as Captain Kangaroo. It doesn't get stranger than that. Uh, yeah, the papers have been full of this. This has been pretty much the nonstop Nutmeg news for the past three, four days. Well, Obviously, it's a tempest in a teapot, but here's the telling thing. The mainstream media is all over this, and in fact, it's nothing but uh, sort of making more sport of nutmeg. Uh, they're just really going to town with this, and it shows 
that she no longer has the sort of bubble of protection she once had with the U.S. media. No, those days are long gone. So maybe this is actually a good thing after all. Another thing, and this came from the video I did Sunday morning, not the uh, Just Chatting video Sunday evening. I mentioned that one of the delightful things for me about the coronation was little Prince Louis. So let's go back and take a look at that. But the part that wasn't boring was watching little Prince Louis. Oh, that child is so precious. And of course he was bored and he was yawning and he was making faces and shifting from one foot to another. And I thought, oh, you know, people are going to criticize the poor child. They're going to do it because people can be jerks. Meanwhile, I thought this was the most precious thing ever. I, well, I'm not the only one who thinks that little Prince Louis stole the show. Uh, let's take a look at this. This has just been blowing up on TikTok. This is fantastic. Yes, everybody, it seems, was utterly delighted with that child. With one exception. Because remember, I said I knew people were going to slam those kids. Well, Omid Scobie, it seems, couldn't waste the opportunity to blame the little Cambridge Wales children. Uh, and, of course, to take a swat at William and Catherine at the same time. He did an article for Harper's Bazaar, which, by the way, I think is utterly appalling. I am disappointed that Harper's Bazaar is dealing with this sort of nonsense to begin with. Uh, and, frankly, it really lowers my opinion of that publication. Scobie, in, in his article, says that William and Catherine held up the coronation because they were late and, quote, the children were to blame, which apparently is absolutely not true, had nothing to do with the little ones, but that swat at, first of all, William and Catherine, and second, their poor little children, oh, please. This is absurd, and really, that sort of disparagement involving small children, there's no place for that in legitimate media. There really isn't. Uh, it turns out that William and Catherine were held up. Charles was not upset by it, and the reason for the holdup was that uh, wreath in Catherine's hair was problematic. Now, I don't think I mentioned this in the video last week, but I did get into this in the comments. Uh, a lot of people were wondering what was going on with that. Well, here is my opinion, and I have to be very clear, opinion only. I believe the reason there were no tiaras present was simply to avoid detracting from the fact that Charles and Camilla were being crowned, that Buckingham Palace wanted to make sure the only crowns out there were the ones that were being placed on the heads of the king and queen. Not unreasonable. Meanwhile, you had a whole bunch of royals at a major state occasion 
wherein the women would ordinarily be wearing tiaras, and what do you do? Well, obviously, they found some interesting and rather inventive solutions to the dilemma. But of course, the problem is the women had to deal with, with their hair, and these were heavy metal whatevers, wreaths, I'm going to call them. So it didn't go down as smooth as silk. Oh, well, let's get over it and get past it. Was this anything that ruined the coronation? No, Omid, it wasn't. Was it the fault of the little Cambridge Wales children? No, Omid, it wasn't. And the very idea that Harper's Bazaar came out with that I think is appalling. My personal opinion is they need to issue a retraction, but they also really need to reconsider who's doing their writing for them. My opinion. All right. So, but you all know, I think those little kids are adorable. But again, like I said, there's always going to be some jerk slamming those poor little children. What can I say? In this case, it was somebody who seems to be looking for the crown Michael Jackson left behind. How much plastic surgery can we get? How many times can we lighten our skin? So, I guess it's consider the source. Now, let's take a look at what I did want to get into and we got the fun stuff out of the way. Now we're getting into some of the heavy stuff. This is a complaint that has been filed by the Heritage Foundation against the Department of Homeland Security. Now, the documents, by the way, I really need to say this, the documents were all sent to me by the Royal Grift. She has been talking about this, and I decided to take the opportunity to see if I couldn't break some of this down and make it a little more intelligible. Now, remember, I am not an attorney. This is not legal advice. I am an educator. My role is to help you understand, not to help you navigate the court system. So, the Heritage Foundation is a conservative think tank. It's probably the most influential think tank in the world today. They operate out of Washington, D.C. They've been around for 50 years. I, I'm pretty sure they date back to the, um, the second Nixon administration. Yes, it would be. Yeah, second Nixon administration, I think. So they are uh, well-staffed, well-funded. I guess the bottom line is, even if you are not conservative and don't like their political position, you have got to give them credit. They are not staffed by dummies. They have scholars. They have... You know, very, very well experienced attorneys on their staff. They know what they are doing. And they are bringing a complaint, and this is a complaint for declaratory and injunctive relief. We'll get into that in a minute. Against the Department of Homeland Security. And the specifics are involving how it is that the sock puppet got into the United States and how he is staying here given his public, very public, uh, acknowledgement of what amounts to massive and chronic drug abuse. Uh, there's just no other way to put it. Anybody who has read Spare is extremely clear about the fact that the sock puppet has been abusing drugs since he was quite young. And abusing drugs, by the way, that's, there's a very clear definition for that. Uh, if I take a prescription medication uh, according to my doctor's instructions, I'm using a drug. 
if I take a, a street drug that is illegal or take my prescription medication in a way that my doctor has not advised me to do it, then you're starting to move into drug abuse. Uh, the sock puppet and his adventures in marijuana, he's admitted to cocaine, uh, mushrooms, hallucinogenics, etc. This is drug abuse. No two ways around it. We're talking about, in many cases, illegal substances and not just illegal in the United States, but illegal back in the UK when he allegedly began doing this and in other countries, because apparently he was doing this when he was in Africa as well. So, declaratory and injunctive relief. This is what they are asking for. Declaratory relief would be asking the courts to clarify, to explain the rights and responsibilities of people involved. So, what they are in effect saying to the judge is, this is what the law is saying. Homeland Security is responsible for enforcing the United States immigration policies. And it looks like on the surface, we have someone coming into the country who's clearly in violation. And we'd like to know why this is, you know, is this okay? You know, tell us is, is you know, are we looking at a situation in which, um, in which the law is being violated. Injunctive relief is to compel someone to do something or not do something. Now, the injunctive relief they're looking for is they are asking that Homeland Security produce the documents, everything, all of the information that led them to issue a visa to a chronic drug abuser. So, yeah, big deal. I mean, very big deal. They are citing the larger implications of this because it's not just, oh, the sock puppet did a little bit of marijuana when he was in college. No, no, no. It's much bigger than that because, of course, he's still commenting on his drug abuse. He is on um, public media programs. He's published it in his book and saying, this is my drug use. <laughs> well, frankly, I know it's just, it's hard to keep a straight face. He really is saying, pass the doobie. I, what more can you say? He was talking in his book about going to parties at Courtney Cox's house and and there's cocaine and I just it is so over the top it's that yeah it is demanding uh, somebody make some sort of explanation for how this is happening now what they don't say but what is implied oh and I should mention this is more than 50 pages this complaint this is just really extensive. What is implied but not said outright is we have a rich British prince coming in to our country with his massive history of drug abuse bragging, publicly bragging about how many drugs he's done with what actresses, etc., etc., while we have people who have come into this country to scrub toilets and pick lettuce who are living in deportation camps. So yeah, it's kind of a big deal. And the fact of the matter is, I look at that and say, this is not a conservatives issue. This is in fact uh, a liberals issue as well, because how can you call yourself socially liberal if you do not feel there is great injustice in the rich British prince coming in saying he can do anything he wants, while 
the poor immigrant farm worker or domestic worker is getting herded off into camps, and we've all read about the conditions there, for all kinds of pathetically small reasons, why is he here and there getting bounced? Why is the immigration law not being enforced? Why is it not being enforced uniformly? And enforcing the immigration law, this is the province of the Department of Homeland Security. So I look at this and I see this as an issue um, whether you are conservative or liberal that anyone can and should get behind. We should all be horrified that poor people, and we're talking the poorest of the poor when we start talking about domestic service workers and migrant farm workers. Why is the sock puppet here blatantly violating our immigration law, whereas other people who have done virtually nothing to harm the interests of our country, why are they being herded back across the border? I think we should all be upset about this, just as compassionate human beings how can we not see this as horrific social injustice? So we are going to be following this case. Oh, and by the way, that 50 some pages, about half of that consists of quotes from the sock puppet bragging about his drug use. Now bragging is my word, but I just don't feel there's any other way to characterize the statements he's making, especially when he goes off chatting on about the Hollywood parties he's attending with these A-listers where they're passing the coke. That's a boast. No two ways around it. That is a serious boast. So, we're going to be watching this. We're going to be following up on this. My hope is that some of the legal channels on YouTube, and some of them are not kindly disposed to Nutmeg and her sock puppet. My hope is that they will get involved in this too, because I can give you the overarching views on this. And as you noticed, I tend to stick with the social issues because, you know, that's the part that's of interest to me. I would, I would love it if some of the legal minds in our YouTube community could get involved in this, and maybe they will, maybe they will, uh, because that could be extremely informative for all of us. So, that's what I have for you all today. Uh, I think the coronation went well. Our British friends are very pleased with how it went down. Yes, there are always going to be people like Omid Scobie who are not going to be able to resist throwing stones when other people are happy. Throwing stones at little children, though, ooh, that just, that, that doesn't sit well with me. But yes, it's going to happen. Absolutely. What we need to focus on is things went well. It was a good coronation. And now that that is over with, and now that Charles and Camilla are ensconced according to tradition in Buckingham Palace, assuming they weren't before, I don't know. There was a time when a coronation was a big deal. It was the monarch's compact with God. It was that contract that said, this is the king by divine right. Uh, and the king or queen in some cases would have been promising in the eyes of God to be a good ruler, etc. It meant something to the people, especially at a time when the population 
was almost universally of a religious bent, that for most people, this was a, a very significant aspect of their daily lives, their, their faith. I don't know if it's still the same thing, if it's still a question of it's it's more real for the people now that the coronation has taken place. So, to my British friends, I throw this out. Let us know, has the coronation made a difference? Is that something that, that is important to your relationship with the monarchy? I'd love to know, because do keep in mind that as Americans on this side of the Atlantic, we don't even have the Vegas template for how to work this out. For us, our political leaders come and go, they get sworn in, that really doesn't mean anything to us. We consider them um, to be the, the president, for example, pretty much from the moment the election is called. It, we just don't have that, that history. The inauguration just doesn't carry that much weight with us. If someone said, you know, did you watch the inauguration on television? People might say yes, they might say no. It's just, it's not the same for us. And as I say, we just don't have that template. So let us know. All right, that's what I have for you today. We are going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. I hope to see you all on the weekend for our Escaping from 2020. And then again on Sunday night when we return with more Just Chatting. Meanwhile, have a terrific day.